This is Katherine Nightingale of Chattanooga State Community College, and this video is for linear algebra on the topic of the column space of matrix A. By definition, the column space of matrix A, abbreviated call A, is the span of the columns of A. So if you remember from section 1.4, this means the set of all linear combinations of the columns of A. So this means that any element of the column space of A will look like x1 times column 1 plus x2 times column 2 all the way through xn times column n, where the x's are real number scalars. Now, if I'm asked to find a vector in the column space of A, what that means is find some linear combination of the columns of A. So, any element of the column space of A will look like x1 times the first column, which in this case is negative 4, 8, plus x2 times the second column, which is 2, 3 in this case. And x1 and x2 have to be real numbers. Now, I can pick any real number for x1 and x2, so, um, I'm just going to arbitrarily say x1 equals 1 and x2 equals 2. I could have picked any real numbers. I could have picked pi and e, for example, and I would still have a vector resulting that would be in the column space of A. But I picked 1 and 2, so I'm going to do 1 times column 1 plus 2 times column 2, and I'll work that out negative 4 plus 4, 8 plus 6, and so I get the vector 0, 14, and that vector is in the column space of A because it's a linear combination of the columns of A. So anytime you're asked to find a vector in the column space of A, just pick scalars and multiply them by the columns and add your combinations together. Now, if A is an M by N matrix, then the column space of A is going to be a subspace of RM. So it's based on how many rows are in your matrix. And the reason for this is that um, each column will have M entries. And the column space of A is the span of the columns. So you want to look at how many entries are in each column so it's based on the number of rows in your matrix. Another handy tool to remember is that a vector B is in the column space of A if and only if the system AX equals B has a solution. Because this is saying if B can be written as a linear combination of the columns of A, then by definition, it's in the column space of A. So here's one example we'll work through together. If A is the given matrix and U is the vector negative 5, 7, 1, we want to know if U is in the column space of A. So using the statement above, what I'm trying to find out is if the system AX equals U is consistent. So does AX equal U have a solution? So I do my augmented matrix, just like solving any system of linear equations. I row reduce, and I look at whether the system is consistent. So in this case, I have no contradictions, and so it's a consistent system. And so U is in the column space of A. It's that easy. Just put, in, put it in an augmented matrix and row reduce. Now notice that I could prove that U can be written as a linear combination of the columns of A by actually finding the solution or finding a solution to the system AX equals U. And by looking at this, I can see that U is equal to column 1 minus 4 times column 2 plus 0 times column 3. So you can check that out using the columns and make sure all the numbers work out. But I've shown that U can be written as a linear combination of the columns 
which by definition puts it in the column space of A. Now, a little more complicated, finding a basis for the column space of A. So the key idea here is that the columns of A have the same linear dependence relation as the columns of the reduced form of A. So I'm always going to row reduce my matrix in order to find which columns are linearly independent. We have a theorem from this section that says the pivot columns of A form a basis for the column space of A. So what we're looking for is those pivot columns. And the reason for this is the pivot columns are the linearly independent columns. And remember, for a basis, it has to be linearly independent and has to span the same space as your entire um, space. Has to span your entire space is what I meant to say. So let's look at one example of this. We want to find a basis for the column space of A given this matrix A, which is a 4 by 5 matrix, so I have 5 columns of A. Using that theorem, what I'm going to do is row reduce the matrix. So I have my A, and I'm going to find the reduced row echelon form of A and now I'm going to look for my pivots. So I have a pivot in column 1, column 2, and column 4. Okay, so this is good. At this point I could say column 1, column 2, and column 4 form a basis for the column space of A. I want to talk to you a little bit about why this is true. So if you look at column 3 and column 5 I can see that column 3 is equal to 3 times column 1 plus 2 times column 2. And I'm getting this relation by just looking at the columns of the reduced matrix. Column 5 is equal to 5 halves column 1 plus 3 halves column 2 plus 1 times column 4. And so what this tells me is that C1, C2, and C4 span the same space as all five columns because my remaining two columns, C3 and C5, can be achieved through a linear combination of C1, C2, and C4. So I've got the spanning thing of my basis. Now I just need to talk about linear independence. So C1, C2, and C4 are linearly independent because they each have a pivot in their column. So if I were setting up the, the system um, where I had the matrix made of C1, C2, and C4, and I was looking at the system of that matrix um, times a vector equals 0, I would have no free variables. So C1, C2, and C4 are linearly independent. Okay. So these, this meets the definition of a basis, linearly independent and spans the entire space. So my basis for the column space of A is going to be column 1 of A, column 2 of A, and column 4 of A. I always go back to my original matrix. So I have 3, negative 2, negative 5, negative 2, negative 1, 2, 9, 6, and 3, 7, 3, 3. So this will always be your process in finding a basis for the column space of A. Row reduce A and the pivot columns of your original matrix are a basis for the column space of A.